pursuing CFA, you have done your CFA level one. Yes, sir. Okay, level two. Okay, so that is where the calculations part and all start coming. Yes, sir. So, so level two also, I gave level two last year, but couldn't clear because of the ethics. So, there's a subject called ethics, and because of that, so I couldn't clear my level two. So this okay. year, I was supposed to give my level two again in June, but okay. it got postponed because of COVID. So okay. I like I know a lot about like derivatives options and everything, but in theory, it's all different. And when you apply, yeah. it's, it's exactly. Different. So because like. Uh, for example, in case if we check all the theory for options, they yeah. can say their options are right. Yeah. You don't have any obligation. When you start right. towards futures, they say, okay, if you're buying a futures contract, you are getting into an obligation. obligation. So when it comes to real time, uh, when we are trading, okay, so all these things are actually right in terms of somebody who is actually exercising the contract. Contract, correct, correct. correct. Right. So, but we are traders over here. So we are actually looking out for, uh, we are actually speculating. We are kind of trying to capture the price most to price us. Good. Exactly. So we, uh, so theoretical part is all right, but, uh, and the people who actually exercise the contracts, they are actually following the theoretical part. But yeah. when we are kind of trading, so what we are looking out for us kind of to capture in the price most and use that to our benefit. Yes, sir. Yeah. So, uh, so uh, in June, I started trading in equity. So, that okay. was pr pretty like simple and I got good profits. So, I, en mm -hmm. so I entered uh, in derivatives trading in that day and <laughs> I think that was a really bad decision. Mm -hmm. So, uh, initially, I started hedging my positions. Like I used to buy future and then uh, on the contrary, I used to buy put or call like depending on my position. So, so you, was, you, you were not used to stop flow? Like you were just kind of protecting your positions with a put or a call option yeah okay so what were you trading basically on like what was i saying uh, stocks are uh, basically initially i started trading in pharma only so i started tracking pharma so i didn't uh, usually go beyond like i chose sector and started trading in those stocks also okay. i didn't blindly like select stocks and started trading so i used to read news uh, and then so it all happened then i came across your program Okay. And uh, what I really needed was a guidance to trade because the knowledge is pretty much like I have read in theory also. Okay. So I, then, I, then I enrolled in your program and uh, I had a talk with one of your business associates also. So okay. I told him that uh, is there some way that I can directly, you know, uh, uh, like try yeah. to analyze. Yeah. Uh, so he, so uh, he told me. Uh, so like, I'll just tell you, uh, see, I'll, I'll kind of tell you like, so somebody who is starting off, obviously equities would be the first preference. Okay, like in the sun, like to get started off. Why? Because when it comes to equities, you can easily size your positions. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. In the sun, there is no this this concept of lots is actually existing only with derivatives. So if you want to trade one quantity, you can do that. If you want to trade two quantities, two you can, you can do that. Of equities. That means somebody who wants to just get his feet wet first before jumping into the pool. He or she can actually start trading with maybe five quantities, 10 quantities to understand if the systems are working good. If he is capable of controlling his emotions and uh, he's capable of staying disciplined in his setups. Okay. Now, uh, when it comes to futures also, the same logics that we use in equities, right? Yes, sir. The logics of price actions, we use it exactly the same way when it comes to F and O2. No, the only thing is we are not, uh, for example, when we are tracking levels in Reliance, so when we are actually tracking levels in ICSA, we are directly trading on ICSA. We are not uh, trading on anything else. We are directly trading on ICSA. Yes, sir. Uh, now, see, when it comes to a bigger capital, uh, when once your capital kind of gets a bit more bigger, if your capital size is actually somewhat, somewhat bigger, then futures are usually preferred. Why? Because like entering and exiting would be much more. Yes. Uh, easy. easier correct you're trading in lots right now uh, so same logics in equities whatever logics you use the same logics can be used in futures also only thing is like uh, you have to be aware of the expiry m2m uh, m and expiry yeah so. you should be kind of be familiar with the expiry date you kind of need to know what is the lot size okay because like now like uh, your position sizing would be different completely different meaning like depending on the stop loss 
Now oh, you yes, can't sir. take a maximum risk I can take is three thousand rupee. That means uh, I, you can't actually bring out any change in the lot size. Okay. Yes, sir. So same logics that you kind of use in equities, same logics can also be applied in futures. Now when it comes to the future, one more advantage that we have is we kind of get to see the open end. Okay, I'll just give you a, a simple thing. Just have a look at this particular chart. I assume yes. you will be able to see the screen now. Just, just a second. Yes, sir. So this is a chart of Nifty 50. Okay, like right now what we are seeing is a chart of uh, number futures. This is the contract. Yes, right. sir. So now if I kind of have a look, so where do you think there is a resistance in this chart? Where do you kind of think there is a resistance in this chart? Resistance, so uh, like the uppermost resistance that yes. you think, right? sir. I think at uh, so, can, can uh, there is a resistance? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. This this point. Oh. Yeah. So see, there, there is kind of Actually, a resistance over here. Now, yes, sir. Yeah. So, now, now, if I basically look at the candles that is getting formed at this point. Okay, if I kind of look a bit more closer into the candles that is actually getting formed at this particular point, what I realize is uh, the price actually touched this point once, it fell down. Okay. Now towards the end to like towards the end to the price actually touched this particular point, again it dropped down. Yes, just, let's kind of have a look at the kind of candle that got formed over here. Okay, so okay. Let's, kind of, let's kind of have a check on the type of candle that is basically getting formed over here. So what I see is this particular, so th this is a point or this is a level from where the price has faced rejection much. Next time when I have a look at this level, same level, what I realize is some sort of a candle like this is getting formed, which is telling me that again rejection is happening. Rejection happening, yes sir. Even though this candle actually tried to pierce up above the level, it didn't manage to do that. So now large number of sellers came in at that point, pushing the price further down. Yes, sir. And that is exactly the reason we sort of have a candle like this. Okay, so got but it. That is happening at a resistance level. So what, looking at levels, I realize it is a resistance from where price has faced rejection once. Now, when I look at the chart, look at the candle that is getting formed at that particular chart now. Now what I realize is something that is actually showing me a large number of sellers coming in at that point, that kind of candle is getting formed. Okay. Okay. So okay. you can actually refer to this as a bearish pin bar. Yes, sir. Some That's people re refer this to as an inverted hammer. So okay. all these names are just for uh, kind of giving it. The logic is important. Right. So what kind of what we kind of see is sellers are coming in. That's it. Okay. Okay. So price action is completely about this, like identifying levels, identifying the sort of candles that is getting formed. Now, the bad part that we have over here is, this was an end of the day, right? Okay. So today was Friday. Now, based on this candle, I can't trade on Monday. Monday, and correct. Definitely, I realize this is a level. I kind of pretty well realize that this is actually a level that is holding. But I can't trade based on this on Monday. Why? Because when it opens on Monday, now considering the volatility that is existing in the market, a lot of yeah. news is coming in. Based on that, market probably would open maybe somewhere up or somewhere down. Somewhere down, true. Yeah. So now once again, I kind of have to wait for the market uh, on that particular day. I would kind of definitely have to wait for the market to form some sort of a level from where I can actually understand, okay, understand. this is acting as a resistance. And then probably you could check out for a breakout entry. Breakout. Or you could take out take out an entry based upon a retest, depending on whatever you are comfortable with. For example, today, like, uh, so today's market, today's thing we sell, we'll see. So today the market kind of opened over here. So first candle got formed like this, then again an inverted candle is getting formed, which is basically telling me that uh, probably sellers are coming in, but this is not a time to take a decision. Like this probably would not have been a time for anyone to take a decision because it's just the starting of the market. Market dropped down for a while. It didn't manage to break the day's low. Okay. Low. Price down. kind of yeah. Price kind of found difficulty to break the day's low. Now, post this, what happened is that from this point, price started picking up. Mm. Okay. Price started picking up. It continuously yes, picked up. Now, once the price actually breaks the day's high, so the day's high and the day's low definitely acts a significant level. Now, once the day high gets broken, many people would have considered going for a long position, expecting the price to long position, correct? Yeah, long position. move up more. Yeah, 
you you expect it to move further. Now, when the price is actually dropping down, what we kind of see is the price never managed to break the day's low, which would uh, kind of tell us that no, the price is not in a sentiment to pick up further. Right. Okay. So yes, sir. Uh, now the thing is. Taking decisions during the market hours, that is what is important. Like in the sense, like after the market has closed, anybody could say, okay, I could have bought here, I could have sold here. Yes, sir, true. Now, the thing is like, you should, uh, so right now we are looking at futures. Okay. So you should kind of have a plan in your mind where let's say that you, you are just checking out for the opening range breakout. Always you are actually checking out for the first 15 minute high, 15 minute low breakouts. Okay. okay. Now you should have actually checked out for yourself how this system is performing. Okay. How this performance, how the system is actually performing whenever you have tested it, let's say for the last three months, five months. I'm not telling you to kind of sit and watch for the next three months, five months. Data is available. You can look at the charts, you can study. And then you get confident for yourself. Okay, if I do this, I get this sort of results. Or if I do that, I get that sort of results. Okay, sir. Got it. Now, once you get that confidence, that is when you just start trading a system. Okay. Okay. Now, this is just one part. This and this is just the way how you look at the price. Now, when we kind of talk about price action, like what you are looking at is in this particular system at the particular or defined levels that you're watching. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So yes, at, sir. The, at the levels that you are actually watching, what, what are the sort of candles that is getting for? Okay, so sir, for me, uh, sorry, sir, yeah. but sir, sir, like for me, I I don't really know how to look into candles and interpret what candles are. So probably okay. I'll study about it, uh, like you said. What okay, I'll just candles. kind of tell you, like, see, nobody can. Uh, so when we are born, we don't know how to walk, right? Yeah, yeah. Start by crawl. So same way, nobody knows how to interpret candles when they get started, and nobody will ever complete learning how candles is going to behave or nobody can actually say this is going to happen after this candle happens. No, we can't say that. all we can say is, okay, this sort of candles are getting formed. So probably what we kind of realize is that once the market slows down after some time, we have some abrupt move happening. Maybe our view. So once we enter the trade kind of exiting out before your stop loss, rather than that, what I did is once the view, like you enter the trade with the view, right? Yes, so sir. the best thing to do is you wait for your stop loss, your target to get, get it. So that is what I personally find to be better. better. So what I realize is whenever like at that time my views are going wrong, this market is completely moving against me. Usually the intensity of the move is pretty much high. Okay, sir. So I go for a counter side position on bank nifty too with the same risk reward ratio. So probably by the time nifty hits my stop loss, bank nifty would have almost reached my target. Okay. So it would still be a one hour, uh, almost yes. be a one hour, right? Yes, sir. Yes, so sir. that kind of approach that has helped me. So in the case of like your case, it is like Nifty and Pharma, right? So you yes, kind of uh, so if you're going for a long on Nifty, uh, sorry, if you're going for a long on Pharma, on Pharma short yeah. on Nifty. Uh, no, since it is already inversely related, you probably would have to go for a long on Nifty. Long on Nifty, yes. Sir. Thing, I haven't checked this thing for Nifty and Pharma, but Pharma. Nifty and Van Nifty like is kind of working out for me. Yes, sir. Uh, actually, sir, I follow you on Instagram okay. and I live long with those. So I just see, sir, everybody trades on indexes only, like mostly. And I have never traded on index, so right. like I'm I'll tell you, I tell you the reason. Okay, see, one thing, one thing about people trading on index is due to the fact that once you start getting comfortable with, see, it's not everybody trades on index. Sixty percent of our members are trading purely on crude oil. They don't uh, trade crude oil also. Say so commodities are also so risky, but uh, so uh, like, see, commodity is a good thing as it is open till late night. 11.30. Yes, sir. Yes, Even yes, I have one screen for crude right now running. So, commodity is <laughs> open through all. Okay. okay. Like, so, it makes it a big attraction for working employees. 
Now, yes, sir, true. when it comes to commodity, somebody who is trading in crude oil, they usually track only crude oil. Okay. Okay. Now, somebody who tracks Nifty, Nifty or Bank Nifty, they kind of have this tendency that stick on with Nifty and Bank Nifty. They don't have to look at other stocks. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Now there could be some phases of time when uh, the uh, like the individual farmer stocks are not giving you moves. Yes, sir. So there are the, the beginning of the lockdown, right? Beginning yes, of sir. the lockdown, almost like every single day there were good trading opportunities on Sipla, Lupin. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All these stocks. Okay, like there were really good moves. Now, uh, but now that sort of intensity is not there. Because it is already gotten that resistance, it's very difficult to predict that will it come down or will it go up. Yeah, yes, so, it is risky. So yeah, I'm not telling you it is not possible to trade on it. It's definitely possible, but if you kind of have, uh, if you kind of uh, see, uh, but if you kind of have a favorite set of bosses, you maintain it just like that. Along with that, you can add Nifty or Bank Nifty to your bucket, just like another additional stock that you could yeah. track daily. Right. Yes, sir. So that kind of uh, so rather than taking out different different stocks every day, people kind of find comfort. Okay, I stick with this segment. I stick with this. Yes, it is easier also. Now it'll kind of help you much more. Now I was talking to you regarding uh, opening range breakout. Right, you kind of check out for the day set. If you have to check out different stocks, it'll take you a lot of time. Yes, sir. Probably would confuse you. So now if you're looking out this particular setup only on crude oil. Or you're checking on this particular setup only on index. Uh, it makes it takes you much more lesser time to get comfortable in that. Yes, sir. Right, but definitely uh, getting uh, getting started with stocks is the best thing. Why? Because you can easily position size, manage your risk the best way. Now, once you're comfortable with that, then the same logic. See, logic is almost same everywhere. Yes, sir. See, as far as my personal knowledge, price action has obeyed the best when it comes to Forex. Okay, so Forex is where we kind of see that the most kind of tend to continue for longer duration of time. Okay. Uh, post that, like we kind of see in index Nifty, uh, Nifty especially, and uh, that is what I personally, uh, my personal thing, and crude. Okay. okay yeah. Now, but that doesn't mean that you can't trade on stocks. You can definitely trade. Is completely depend on how you are getting comfortable with things. Now we have members who trade purely on Seal. We have people who trade purely on Tata Motors. We have people who trade purely on uh, India Bulls. Now, now they don't do that. India Bulls earlier, they used to trade only on India Bulls. Oh. Okay. Uh, people who trade on uh, like some set of stocks that they are most comfortable with. The last because of the last months, I was so sure that I won't have trade in stocks only because. Is one news and the stock goes down like so bad. Yeah, yeah. so that is also the stock actually kind of uh, reacts. Stocks are usually more emotional. Yes, yes, sir. So, uh, so that is uh, like the most emotional stock being yes bank. Now nobody kind of trades on it, but yes, sir. Yeah, people used to trade on it. Why? Because you really don't know. Like if your view is right, like you you can actually ex expect some pretty great moves. Yes, sir. Okay. But it's not something suggested. Why? Right? Because it's like too much uh, risk. Yeah, yes, sir. The risk reward is not favorable. Yep, yeah, exactly. Exactly. So uh, now, when it comes to Nifty, Nifty, uh, Bank Nifty, and all, see one more thing. Yeah, one more thing I'll tell you. See, when it comes to Nifty, on average, the stop loss that I take is usually 20, 25 points. 15 okay. to 20, 20, 25 points on average. Okay, sir. So that means position sizing is almost going to be the same every yes, single day. Yes, sir. Number of lots I trade if it is X in this trade, probably the next trade also is kind of going to be X itself. X, correct. Not much of a variation happens. Same thing with crude. Like my average stop loss is in the range of 15 to 20 points, 20, 25 points. Same. Nifty and crude is kind of almost the same. Like the risk I take. So that is one more factor. So uh, at some sort of uh, time, you yourself will be capable of understanding which is working the best for you. Now yes, that completely depends on the individual. Just like once he or she explores different things, that is when he or she realizes, okay, this is what... I have been following you for like two months and then after that I joined the program. Mm -hmm. So that because I like, I have like, I was very curious about the markets and trading and I entered during lockdown. So there is like so many courses available and okay. everything. And it is very difficult to trust. 
Like, so we are not a course provider, first of all. What's that? <laughs> we are basically not a course provider. Like, yeah, maybe yeah. we will kind of ask, like, why should we take this course from you? Like, so I don't deal in the course part, first of all. Yes, exactly, sir. So this is the only thing that I uh, personally felt was the best because, sir, I came across a lot of courses, like, honestly, but everyone was just, you know, just teaching. Nobody was giving us the practical exposure and the knowledge that we need because, like, I I know a lot of people who trade, like my friends also, but they are they have always have some mentor, like okay. they sit with who they ask for trades. So I like needed that mentor only okay. after wa- watching your courses and everything. So I thought that like this is the best uh, one can get. So that is so why. Like, like see what we kind of want. See what we are emphasizing on us. You are capable of developing your own trading plan. Okay. See, logics are kind of, if you kind of honestly ask me, the logics are kind of pretty much the same. Yes, sir. So, whichever trader you kind of approach, see, uh, maybe somewhere you would have actually heard, this strategy is giving you 90% results. Yes, sir. See, I can tell you, there is no strategy that is going to give you 90% result or it doesn't happen. Yeah. The thing, see, maybe in a, maybe a week will give you results. True, true, yes, sir. For a week, it will give you results. But for the continuous, like uh, for your continuous trading career, it won't give you results. See, on average, a good strategy is something that gives you a hit rate of around 40 to 60 percentage. Yes, sir. Any strategy is going to give you a 40 to 60 percentage hit rate. Now, markets are pretty much trending. You probably get 70 percentage. Nothing more than that. Yes, sir. The only thing that is going to help you is your risk reward ratio. Okay, so every time you win, you should kind of be making double of what you risk. And every time you lose, you should be actually losing a, just a fraction of what you have uh, cap- been capable of winning in that particular trade. Yes, sir. So, so, for, so like for in October, it was like opposite for me only. Okay. And the one thing, that one mistake I did was I carried options for too long. Okay. And like my like i traded in options so i know that option like you shouldn't buy options in the last week because of that premium decay Mm -hmm. so i didn't trade any options last week but all of my positions got carried away till the last week so i like i was like the market will go up it will go up because i was like analyzing and from my like everything was showing bullish but then pharma and nifty no see first of all like see option when you're buying option, uh, especially I personally never take any overnight positions and options. Okay. Yes, so I option, like I personally do it just for trading. That is I identify level where I can actually take an entry. I can take an exit. exit. So based upon that, like based upon a stop loss, based upon a target, that's what I do for options. Now the thing is uh, overnight, I, what I do is just the weekly expiries. Okay, the weekly expiries I sell. So that will be usually something... Have you heard about something called as an iron condor? Yes, sir. I know that. You will be getting into the, all those things. So, where you kind of try to define a range within which the market could lie and you kind of sell upon the same. If the market stays within the range, then you become profitable. Profitable, yes, sir. Okay. So, uh, over there, you also kind of keep a stop loss where you kind of uh, are capable of limiting the maximum risk you are taking. Okay, sir. You, you li- your profit will be pretty much limited. But you can, but actually, yeah, your risk will also be probability good. is actually very high. Yes, sir. So in that particular case, your risk reward, uh, the iron condos I usually uh, enter, risk reward is like two is to one. The risk is twice and the reward is one. Is one. But the probability is pretty much high. Now, even though the risk is actually twice the reward, even if your view goes wrong, you are capable of uh, kind of managing your position and probably you would be capable of exiting it like one is to one risk reward okay right but yes. the odds of you going right is actually higher okay that is actually something that is pretty much conservative in the sense doesn't involve much so may i just uh, ask you like how was your risk reward actually satisfied in options when you were trading options where your risk reward actually was being maintained the same way you were doing in equities no, no, sir. It was not. So that so you kind of have the answer of what probably went wrong. Because yes, now if your risk reward was the same, then probably even if everything went bad, 
you probably would be still having half of the capital exactly. but half, half of the profit still would have been with you right exactly. so now you realize that already so is it like what i suggest you is you continue with equities for some more time okay, okay. so uh, basically in another two weeks time we'll be getting into uh, f and o so okay. till then you stick with uh, equities as well now once you kind of understand price action properly in equities you kind of check out for the normal uh, like logics right like breakouts all these things once you get comfortable in equities go ahead with uh, futures then you can grow your capital now let me just tell you something now let's say that you kind of reach a stage where you are pretty much consistent you are pretty much gaining a 4 percentage or 5 percentage or 10 percentage per month you keep 5 percentage per month or 10 percentage per month you continuously making that now you want actually mind yourself in funding your demat further like increasing yeah. your capital you can yeah. do that confidently but whenever you are actually looking out to make 100 percentage of your account and all on a month uh, usually what goes wrong is you will kind of have this uh, mindset that okay if you are going wrong you will be wiping yeah. Almost when you are looking out for hundred percent, your probable downside risk is almost fifty percent. Fifty percent, yes, sir. Right. Yes. That is, your capital also comes down by fifty percent. Fifty percent, yes, sir. Right. Yes, so sir. if something goes wrong, you are wiping out half of your capital. Yes, sir. So that doesn't give you. Let's say that you have doubled your money one month, but next month you won't be kind of having the courage to add more fund into it because you know that if you go wrong. you will be actually wiping out half of your capital half, yes sir but a system like this where you are consistently making 5 percentage per month or 10 percentage per month which you are consistently doing that you would be kind of willing to do that because you realize okay my downside risk is somewhere like 2.5 to 5 percentage or 5 yes, percent yes sir so just think about uh, building something that is sustainable in the sense long run so you are 20 think about building as a career to uh, like till your 50 or 60 yes, as long as you want to trade right yes, so and this this thing doesn't have an age like how, like we our like eldest a uh, trading member is actually 65 years old wow okay. so he is using it as an exercise for the brain brain yes sir but so to think think about making 5 percentage every single month yes sir yes sir i think this is so, a very uh, yeah. good uh, good chat <laughs> bring down your risk in the sense like bring down your risk now let me just tell you like if you are a cfa who knows trading yes sir you are a cfa who does the real trading yes sir you have a very uh, good uh, income potential yes sir okay. as a plus uh, uh, what's up no you exactly understand the things that you're learning exactly and so this was like i this was my, my only motive first initially i i thought that because of the lockdown also so my parents are very strict like you, you don't have to go out anything and i didn't just want to sit in the home and do nothing and i i graduated this year only okay. and my exam also got postponed so that Where did is you graduate like, from uh, yes sir where did you graduate from uh since javier's college oh you oh since javier's that's great okay okay So, uh, yeah. so I graduated this year, and I didn't want to sit. And all of my friends who got a job, okay. were nobody's job was starting. Hmm. So I and my exam also got postponed. So pretty much I was doing nothing. So I started doing many online courses also. I started hmm. Python, hmm. SQL, but then it was like I I didn't really find it interesting. Like hmm. I don't want code. to do coding all my life like i don't want to know coding but mm. it's something i won't do for all my all oh. my life mm. then i started like i did this course uh, on investment banking it's pretty mm. nice mm-hmm. so i entered into markets started trading and plus there's my brother who trades like he's an option seller and he's a very big like big person okay. he has a capital of 100 cr so yeah. i your brother where is he based out of basically like we live in the same building Like, okay. Kind of you present brother. No, like we are like we live in the same building, so we are neighbors. Like okay. pretty, like okay, like like that way. So mm-hmm. then I start like he was trading, like he mm-hmm. trades. Now he started trading from his home only. So one day I went to his home. I was set, I was seeing his setup. It was really interesting. Mm-hmm. Then I started trading in equity. Started. So I thought that I can make trading my profession. Like it's really cool, and plus you get the freedom also. 
but then he told me that you're just 20 and you you have the knowledge you have time you can learn trading but you can pursue it as your profession any time yeah exactly that's that definitely a good option like in the sense like see trading like is not like you finish you study trading and then you get into full time trade exactly you should actually be doing something like you should be uh, pursuing trading alongside then once exactly. you are actually pretty much confident with what you are doing then you should get into full time trading exactly so then uh, so then i thought that instead of i i made up a mind that it is so easy i just do trading only it is so simple you can do it from your home also so my parents will also be happy that i am not going out anywhere during covid okay. but then uh, then uh, i realized that he, i'm like i can study and then also i can pursue trading like there's no such rule that you can't trade like after college okay. so then i uh, thought that probably i fund my school experience okay okay got okay shita so i guess uh, you should basically be focusing on equities for some more time so maybe you could yes, catch up sir. sometime later okay the sun yes sir so for please update me your progress yeah yes sir thank you so much sir okay okay shita so nice speaking to you like i got a lot of understanding about uh, what you said like how usually people in their uh, starting like Uh, like yeah. the whole the thoughts go through their mind so because it is it was so confusing because i graduated there were no jobs and my exam got postponed every everyone was like sitting in their homes like idly there is nothing to do so you get uh, you get more tense because because of covid also everyone is like you shouldn't go outside you shouldn't do that job so my parents my not even, not just my parents like in generally everyone's parents became more cautious they just sit in the home sit in the home. i think it's very very dangerous to do nothing yeah that's so bad okay sure definitely i, I get to get to understand that definitely so yeah you just update me like maybe sometime yeah. later we could catch up so yes sir sure, for sure thank you sir. and for sir uh, i think if you i uh, i you you start trading like from 9 right hmm so probably uh, if i think i'll just take some trade i think i'll just text you my view and if yeah if you, you could free, definitely share it on the uh, discord like we all will be very much active there yeah and like yeah. i i kind of don't uh, use whatsapp that often like is this code that is used more often okay so i'll text it in the discord room no issues okay, okay sure. thank, nice thank you sir bye sir take care okay. Okay.